All right, in this example right here, we're being asked to find y double prime, or the second derivative of y with respect to x, given this relationship between x and y. What you're gonna notice in this example, there's really tricky and, and really useful ways of simplifying expressions as we go on, given previous true statements. Okay, so we're starting with the statement that the square root of x plus the square root of y equals one. What we're gonna do is apply the derivative with respect to x to both sides of this. Before I do that, obviously, I'm gonna rewrite this as x to the one half plus y to the one half equals zero. I'm now gonna apply the derivative with respect to x to both sides. When I do that, I will get one half x to the negative one half. In this factor right here, I'll do exactly the same thing. Though you probably know at this point, I'm also gonna get this dy dx because of the chain rule from this. Now what I'm going to do is just rewrite and use some algebra to solve for the dy dx. And what I'm going to do is rewrite these negative exponents as square roots. The, the negative part uh, brings it down to the denominator. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna subtract over this term. Um, again, my goal is to isolate this. So what I'm going to get is uh, one over two times the square root of y, dy dx equals negative one over two square root of x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by two square root y to cancel it from over here. So multiply both sides um, by that. And the result of that uh, will end up being negative two square root y over two square root x. I can obviously cancel those twos, so I get negative square root y over the square root of x. Just quickly right here, so I'm using this dy dx with leaving this notation. I could use the prime notation as it's being asked here, um, just to rewrite this in a little bit of ways. So this is what the first derivative is, uh, but another way of writing this would just to say y prime equals this, or maybe more usefully for me wanting to differentiate again, would to write this as negative y to the one half times x to the negative one half. And again, all I'm doing there is rewriting those square roots and the fact that this square root of x is in the denominator uh, with these rational exponents. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to differentiate y prime to find y double prime. A really important thing I wanna emphasize, and you're gonna see the reason in a half a second, I wanna emphasize the fact that this, we consider now in this world, a true statement that the square root of x plus the square root of y equals one. And we also have that dy dx equals this right here. And just a heads up, what we're going to do as we do this derivative, we are going to actually substitute these values at some point, and it's a really useful way for simplifying our expressions. All right, so if I apply differentiation to y prime, what I get, the derivative with respect to x of y prime is simply y double prime. That's actually the definition of the second derivative. Now I want to differentiate this side over here. We're gonna to have to use the product rule. So I'm gonna bring that exponent down, multiply it by the negative one and take one away. So it's gonna be negative one half, y to the negative one half. When I do this, I do need to use the chain rule. And so I'm gonna output a dy dx from that. And now I'm gonna multiply this by x to the negative one half. Now the product rule, so that was just the first term of the product rule. Now I'm gonna multiply the derivative of this by this thing. And so what I'll get is negative one half times x to the negative three halves. And again, times then this factor right here, negative y to the one half. Importantly again, is I don't get out a dy dx because I didn't differentiate this factor with the y. There's a lot of stuff going on here with negative exponents. I'm just gonna rewrite all of this, applying the negative exponents, applying the fractional exponents, canceling some negatives, and we'll see what we can do next. All right, so here's what I have right here. You might wanna pause to, to double check that you agree with each of these. Just to say this real fast, the square root of x and square root of y come from these factors right here with the negative one halves. That's why they show up down here. The two obviously was already in the denominator. And then the same thing over here, the only thing difference was is that this y did not have a negative exponent and this negative three halves gives me this factor down here in the denominator. All right, if you agree with that, now comes the fun. 
I want to simplify this as much as possible. And this is awkward. I don't want to define my second derivative in terms of my first derivative. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace this dy dx factor with this equivalent expression. We know that dy dx equals this. I could use this also, but I think at this point, this will be the easiest version to use. So let me replace dy dx with negative square root of y over the square root of x. So there was that first substitution I was warning you about. Now it feels a lot better. We now have y prime, double prime, in terms of just x's and y's, which feels a lot better, not in terms of other de de derivatives. Now I'm just gonna do some canceling here. These y's cancel here, the negatives cancel each other out, and then I'll get uh, square root of x times the square root of x. If you haven't seen this in a while, the square root of x times the square root of x is simply x. So let me rewrite this. At this point, we're pretty dang good. This is a really simplified version of the second derivative. Again, we don't have the first derivative in this definition. Um, but I want to go one more step, again, to kind of show you how I could use this to make this even better. What I'm first going to do is simplify this factor right here. So the square root of x to the third, uh, I won't go into the details of this, but simple algebra is that I'm going to split x to the third into an x squared and a factor of x. I can, I can factor out or actually evaluate the, the square root of the x squared. This right here is going to turn into x times the square root of x. So there again, this is the same as that right here. What I'm going to do now is I want to add these fractional expressions together. This is almost exactly the same denominator, but I do need to multiply the numerator and denominator by a square root of x to make them the same. So let's now add these together. So when I have the same denominator here, what I'm going to get is the square root of x plus the square root of y all over 2x square root of x. Final trick and then we're done. Again, you might be able to thinking what we're going to do next. In this statement right here, we've almost got it as simple as we could. We have it as one fraction, though what we can do is apply the fact that the square root of x plus the square root of y equals 1 in this context of this problem. So in this case right here, that is simply 1. So the second derivative can be rewritten as 1 over 2x times the square root of x. Whew. And puts the differentiation is sure as hell fun, isn't it? Now I know there's a lot of stuff going on here where it can feel a bit complicated, though I want to emphasize with the implicit differentiation when you're here is that this is the only real trick is understanding the chain rule. The rest of the moves that we did in both of these two examples is simple algebra afterwards, though to say simple is kind of disingenuous. It obviously isn't easy, but it's not overly tricky algebraic tricks being implemented in a calculus problem. Quick overview of the bigger steps here. Again, the main concept here is the implicit differentiation part, which is applying the chain rule to things that are not functions. But the tricks in this video specifically were the fact that when I want to find the second derivative, don't forget, you first need to isolate the first derivative of y with respect to x and then differentiate again. There's no chain rule going here. By definition, the derivative of the first derivative is simply the second derivative and that is it. We differentiate, we had this awkward dy dx where the first derivative showed up again when you differentiate. That will always happen in this case if you have a factor of y. But we replace that dy dx with an equivalent expression that just has x's and y in it. Finally, as we're simplifying, it's always a good idea that to cancel, to rewrite things as radicals, combine any fractional things you can. Um, you won't always be expected to do that, but often it'll make your life a lot easier when you're dealing with more complicated expressions. This is a really good example. We got to this at this point by adding these fractional expressions together, but in this problem, the square root of x plus the square root of y equals one as previously stated. That's actually the first thing, the premise for all of this work giving us this nice simplified answer for the second derivative.